So what exactly are comments? Comments are programmer-readable annotations in the source code of a program. Writing a comment is fairly straightforward. In GDScript, there are two ways to write a comment. The first way to write a comment is by using the pound sign symbol. This is called a single line comment. Also keep in mind that anything written after the pound sign symbol will be considered a comment and not part of the actual code. This means you can write both code and a comment on one single line. Basically anything before the pound sign symbol will be considered code for the compiler to read and everything after the pound sign symbol will be skipped by the compiler. The second way to write a comment in GDScript is by using three double quotation marks followed by your comments ending with three double quotation marks. Something to keep in mind is that a multi-line comment in GDScript is a multi-line string. This means that the compiler will read your multi-line comment as the multi-line comment is not a real comment but rather just a string you can write in your code. There are many different types of comments out there, however, However, these four types of comments you may find yourself using most of the time. You may find yourself using the methodology, description comments, the metadata comments, debugging comments, and code description comments. Let's go ahead and take a look at each of these. The methodology description comments can be used for the explanation of the methodology you use in your code. You will find yourself using this type of comment to explain the code rather than a clarification of the code's intent. For example, a person may add a comment to explain why insertion sort was used instead of quick sort. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So here we have used a multi-line comment with the following sentence. As you can see here, we are explaining through comments the reason behind the choice in our code rather than the intents of the code. Thus, this type of comment is considered a methodology description comment. Next, we have our metadata comments. These comments you will find most of the time at the top of the script and may include the company name, the file name, the year the script was created, the names of people who maintain it, copyright, and much, much more. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of metadata comments. For this example, I took a portion of the metadata comments you may find yourself seeing if you look at the Godot engine at GitHub. This is what it may look like if they wrote this in GDScript. You can notice that we have the name of the Godot engine followed by the website, followed by a copyright, the year it was created, and who are maintaining it. You will usually find metadata comments in open source projects, typically to write out in legal terms that you are free to use the open source project however you see fit, depending on the type of license they are giving away. The third type of comments you may find yourself using a lot is the debugging comments. When you are using comments for debugging, you are most likely using a brute force debugging method. An example would be commenting out print statements. Print statements is a common way for programmers to debug code. When you are finished, people tend to comment them out with the idea of using them again later. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a debugging comment. As you can see here, we have an if statement followed by a commented out print statement where we want to see the value inside of X printed out to the screen. Typically, you use print statements to see if something's working, and you comment it out so that way it doesn't run during compile time. This is just a simple example. However, you may find yourself using this quite a lot when you're trying to debug issues with your code in the game. The last type of comment is the code description comment, generally used to make others understand the intent of the line of code. This is vastly different than explaining the methodology or the reason you chose the code. This type of comment should be used only when needed. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. This is an example I typically find beginners using a lot. What they like to do is they tend to name their variables x and y because that's what they tend to read in articles. However, they use comments to explain the intent of the code. In this case, the programmer has decided to let you know that the variable x represents the player's health. This is one way to use comments. 
However, there's a better way to explain this line of code than using a comment. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this would look like. As you can see here, instead of using a comment to explain the intent of our code, we chose to instead name our variable something meaningful to explain the intent of the code. In this case, this is better as we get rid of one line of comment and yet the intention or rather the story we're trying to tell other programmers is this variable will represent the player's health. Now that we've named our variable something meaningful, we can do even more to explain to other programmers the intent of our code. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this would look like. As you can see here, we have let other programmers know that we intend to use this variable for player's health and that this variable should only be an integer. This is an even better way of describing to other programmers the intent of our code without using comments. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't use comments to describe the intent of your code, but rather you should first maximize the use of meaningful names and code intention first before using comments to describe the intention of your code. When should you use comments? There's a saying, code tells you how and comments tell you why. I generally like to attempt to use naming conventions and refactoring to make my code readable. Keep in mind that explaining yourself with code has its limits. When you have reached that limit, then you may use comments to explain why and the rationale behind your code. When to not use comments. You should never use comments as a source of version or source control. That is to say, never, ever, ever use comments to explain which person did what, what that person changed in the code, and when that person made the change. When working in a group, and if information above is important, use GitHub, Bitbucket, or Giteo.